Hi there, folks. And uh, it's always quite daunting to follow someone like Audrey Waters, but um, here we go. So um, I'm going to talk about, well, I'll start with, for those that don't know me, uh, my name is Martin Hoxie, and I work um, as a member of staff at the Association for Learning Technology, but I'm actually an alt member as well. And my background is learning technology. Um, I started off. Uh, at Glasgow Caledonian University working with Linda Craner, uh, University of Strathclyde with Professor David Nicholl. And uh, uh, today I'm going to talk about OCTEL, which is um, Alt's Open Course in Technology Enhanced Learning. It's actually the second iteration of the course that we've run. And for this iteration, we, we did something um, experimental. It was, um, as uh, Maren will um, tell you, it was, some of it was very last minute, uh, but um, for those also that came along to Brian Maver's uh, presentation, there's some nice innovation that you can do when you're under pressure and strains. Um, also, a lot of the background of the things I'm talking about are, is collected in uh, the Octel blog, so I'll be talking about some of the technical uh, aspects and you'll find links to different things for that um, and you'll also find some of the data so I'm not going to go into um, some of the course information but uh, it's there if you want to have a look at it. Uh, after David Kernahan's uh, presentation uh, on day one I feel I should uh, put this little disclaimer to say these are my views not the views of the Association of Learning Technology and, um, and you'll see why in a, a second hopefully. So. Um, does anyone know what, what this is? Yes, this is ARPANET. So this was the network uh, developed in the 60s by the US military uh, to um, connect data centers. And obviously, for those of you know, that you know your uh, internet history, ARPANET was one of the components that facilitated the development of the internet. Uh, and this was a, a picture of it in 1990, so, and obviously it's got a lot bigger and it's expanded. A lot of that early work uh, was um, done by Paul Brown and this idea of, you know, w if you're making a military network, one that's uh, robust, strong, reliable, what sort of shape does it have? Uh, and um, they've gone for the distributed model. Um, and. I'm quite interested in networks and how not just networks of uh, information, but networks of people. Um, and having worked in networks for a while, you, you, you know, we can see this distributed model is, you know, it's out there all the time. Uh, but I think one of the questions I think we should ask ourselves as educators um, is, you know, if, if we were to associate education to one of these networks, what, what would it look like? And are we getting the most out of the, the experience we're giving to learners by perhaps, um, you know, I would say that a lot of institutions are perhaps more to the uh, decentralized approach of uh, learning and teaching where we've got this wonderful uh, weapon of mass distraction that the US government have facilitated in creating that can connect us not just to people, but to knowledge. And so uh, I think that's something very interesting, which is obviously why we've um, started looking at that as a, an aspect of um, Octel. Um, so I'm not gonna mention the M word, but in the 2012, uh, I started looking at what people like George Siemens, Stephen Downs, David Cromery were doing in terms of a distributed education and the tools that they were actually using. And you know, you'll recognize a lot of these names, these services. Um, it's quite interesting, you know, we, and you know, um, Dave White has, and his colleagues have done some very interesting ideas into visitor and residency in, in different spaces. But you know, we have, we're, we're creating data, we're doing stuff in these spaces, but how, can we actually use that within uh, learning and teaching? And this is something um, that uh, George Siemens 
has recently been thinking about um, uh, Google have developed the, the knowledge graph, so this idea of nodes of information that can be connected, so it's like the six degrees of separation of uh, Richard Bacon. Is it Richard Bacon? Am I thinking blue PM presenters? Um, someone, six degrees of something to someone. Um, <laughs> Kevin, thank you. Um, so this idea of, you know, we, we're present in different spaces, but that potentially builds the picture of that person. And it is about the person. It's, um, you know, their uh, attributes in, in terms of, you know, the things that they already know, um, the, the connections that they already have to other people or other information. Uh, and that's really when we were, I, and this was post-reflection on doing Octel was, how can we start doing some of that uh, within the Octel course? And um, as I've, you know, the title of the, the talk indicates, Open Badges seems to be a good way to do that. And I'll, I'll detail some of that in a second. And this is, you know, just underlying the idea of a, a personal uh, learning knowledge graph. And I think there is implications, you know, Audrey's touched upon that um, very eloquently this morning about, you know, ownership of, of data, ownership of your, your profiles in different spaces. So that's the uh, kind of some of the context and my own thinking around this. So Octel, um, for some more information about Octel, it's actually uh, a course that's um, it's facilitated by Alt, but it's, it wouldn't be possible without Alt members. So the lead tutors are Alt members. Uh, the support tutors are uh, Alt members. Uh, any tutors or support tutors? And we've got Linda, yes, of course, and Tracy Madden. Uh, so these 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 people, are, you know, part part of the construction. You know, they're developing the uh, materials and they're helping with the delivery of the materials. Uh, and so that it wouldn't be possible to actually run Octel without them. Uh, this is kind of the general model that we use within Octel. And if you've been browsing around um, the con conference platform, a lot of what we develop in Octel actually gets put into the conference platform. So it's this idea of you know being able to actually pull in some of the data from these different spaces. So um, this year we're pulling in slide shares, for example, into the conference platform, and. The reason for doing this is to then, as a very loose collection of people uh, participating in the course, it's redistributing that information back to them so that they can start making their own connections. Um, it's not just connections to new information, but connections to new people. And having a, a profile as part of that is key. Uh, and also email is key. Uh, we can't get away from email right now, and it's a, a very good technology for actually pushing back so that's what we're doing. We're sucking information into a site, a WordPress site, and then we're pushing it back out um, by email or RSS feeds or um, uh, um, just coming to the site itself if that's what you want to do. Obviously, there's implications with using, um, uh, I've kind of tripped over the RSS word. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail about that today, but. Uh, it's a technology for just moving data around places, and it's a technology that seems to be on the wane. Um, so you should be looking at the work people like Ken Lane, who was mentioned this morning, are doing in terms of another technology, APIs. But again, uh, I won't go into too much detail about that. So the, the interesting stuff. So uh, the badging aspect. So hopefully you're familiar with um, digital badging, um, I, I don't think there needs to be much explanation about it, because I think a lot of people already grasp the idea of what a badge is, and a digital badge is exactly the same. It's something that an individual can have. They can display it if they want. Um, it's something for them to collect. So as part of Octel, we had a number of badges that participants could collect. Um, the course is structured in a uh, a weekly topic um, basis. And so each week um, of the six weeks, we had a collection of five different badges that people uh, could achieve. And these were the same types of badges each week. 
although the activities associated with those would be related to the week in question. We started off with some very basic badges of checking in. So this was a case of coming to the site and clicking a button. Um, check-in badges, I think, were useful, and you'll see why in a second, um, just as well as an entry point, getting people used to you know, what they have to do within the system to actually get a badge. Then we had uh, a whip. We were using weekly webinars, so we had a webinar badge. We used uh, an access code at the end of the webinar. Um, so if, uh, the people that uh, were coming several weeks soon worked out that they could scroll to the end of the video and click the badge if they wanted to, um, but uh, we didn't get too hung up about that. And then the final um, badges on the top row there are a tell one and a tell explorer badge. So a tell one was a, an activity, one activity, if you do any activity this week, this is the activity you should do. And for that, we'd ask um, participants in Octel to submit a link to something they've got as evidence of, of that activity. Um, as part of the Octel site, we did in, include forums, so it might be a link to a forum post that they've made on the site, but the idea was to encourage them to write in their own spaces, so in their own blogs or in their own Google Plus groups, and then share that URL. So the only stipulation was that the evidence that they were submitting was public, so that we could go and see it, anyone else browsing the internet could see it as well. And then we had the Tele Explorer badge, which was if you wanted to do more than one thing, you could do uh, two or three or four activities. Uh, and same again, submit a link to that. And if you did uh, any three of these badges, you automatically got um, a, a, a weekly topic badge. So um, we did this all within WordPress, and um, the plugin we used was called Badge OS. Uh, it's a free open source plugin. Uh, if you're interested in badging as part of courses, I would highly recommend that you go and look at it. Um, and I'll highlight some of its features if I have time at the end. But one of the nice uh, features within it was that you could create steps. Uh, so, for example, the topic badge, we just created a, a template step of if you did three things, then you got this badge automatically, which uh, helped a lot with the administration of this. So I mentioned uh, the Tell One and Tell Explorer badges. So um, this was useful for us in terms of an open course. It's, even though we've got data collection um, methods for you know, aggregating active, you know, if you have a blog registered with the site, we'll pull in the data for it. But not everyone wants to take that step. Not everyone has a blog. So the idea of people actually submitting the evidence on to us uh, starts filling in some of that personal knowledge graph. So they're declaring bits of information that they want the rest of the world to see that um, other people on the course might actually find useful. Uh, and I think that's quite interesting for us in terms of being the ability to, to build up a picture of, of a person. And because we were using um, uh, a variation of digital badges called um, Mozilla Open Badges, the evidence associated with the work that they were submitting actually gets baked into the badge information. And so when that badge is in the Mozilla backpack, which is a portfolio place where you can store your badges, they've, they've got a link. The person looking at that badge can potentially go back and see the evidence. So we're getting some sort of interoperability here. Another, I mentioned the check-in badge, and uh, one of the aspects of that uh, I think we found useful in terms of the, the uh, personal knowledge graph was it, it, uh, one of the features within the, the system was the ability um, to show who else had actually earned the badge. So it gives situational awareness, again, in an open course context to actually see who else was active in that week. Um, I think it's very useful for, for other participants. It can be a very lonely experience. And clicking on the person's avatar, of, if they've been awarded the badge, they can go through to the profile, see the person's profile on the site, see where else they existed in, in the internet, make those connections off the site. So it's making something that um, is useful for uh, the individual beyond 
um, just the course. I mentioned um, we were using Badge OS uh, plugin for this, and one of the other nice features was uh, it, its um, ability for uh, tutors to provide feedback on students' work. So those familiar with the WordPress blogging platform will recognize some of this interface, and it's just using the comments as an opportunity for both the tutor and the learner to actually engage in dialogue around the evidence that they've submitted. For us, this was all in, in the public. So again, there are opportunities for people to make connections or to learn uh, vicariously from what other people are doing. I'm going to skip out. This is some of the features in terms of um, uh, the Badge OS plugin in terms of creating these stepped procedures that would automatically award the badge, um, which we found very useful. Um, and because we were integrating uh, a social uh, network aspect with BuddyPress, we can actually do things with, within the community. Um, but again, you know, we, we didn't, you know, all, the, all these points, these are optional things for people to do. These are optional kind of nodes within the graph that people could start creating for themselves uh, and hopefully start making connections. I think uh, one thing to reflect on is a lot of this isn't um, particularly new, and I'm a member of a, a community called Stack Overflow, which is for coders, and again, you have this idea of badges, and uh, people can award badges to other people. So, you know, there's already uh, a lot of experience of these types of um, systems uh, going on. I think one of the, the questions um, asked often about badges is do they actually count? Do they mean anything? Um, and it's quite interesting as part of the course that um, even we ha though we had people at the beginning saying, oh no, I'm not going to do badges. They're not for me. Uh, within week two or three, I was getting emails about how can I submit this evidence for the badge? I'm sorry, I've been caught up in, in this. And I think there's a real ownership here. Um, people they want to collect things, uh, they like doing that. Uh, and so always these badges are going to count for the individual. They won't display them if they don't mean anything to them. Whether they mean anything to an employer is another question. I'm going to skip over some of the R buts, um, but I will uh, point out one thing. Um, there is a, a wider direction of travel that I'm quite interested in following here. And, um, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but you should Google domain of one's own, see what University of Mary Washington are, are doing in this space, because um, I think that will be a real eye-opener for you. Um, and um, Audrey's an advocate of that project. I, I trust and respect what Audrey says. Uh, so. Uh, if you want, to, if you don't trust me, trust Audrey. There's obviously privacy issues, um, so I'm just going to throw that up there for a few seconds, just mainly so you know that I know there are concerns, which maybe you'll ask questions about, and finish with a thank you. Thanks. Um, Mo Moira Maley, hi. 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 <laughs> um, these digital badges flag the beginning of some sort of international cross-platform degrees or qualifications of some sort, and usually standard systems follow those initiatives and mm. they can sort of slow them down and it gets caught up in a bureaucracy. Is, is, is that the way you think that badges will go? Or do you think more generic competencies are going to be indicated by them? which could be added in? Mm. Uh, it's, we are, it, yeah, it's, it's early on. 
I think a lot of people are... I was talking to um, Fiona Harvey from University of Southampton who's starting to look at badges as well. And um, uh, she was saying that th there's issues for us, for ALT as an organisation. You know, we don't have um, institutions like the Quality Assurance Agency looking over our shoulder all the time. Um, for institutions like U uh, University of Southampton, there's obviously very different implications. And um, talking to Fiona, uh, I think for them, it was trying to tackle it in two different ways. So there would be uh, kind of unofficial badges uh, awarded as part of some of the courses that they're doing, but that might then lead on to a university recognized badge. Whether, um, whether that slows down the development um, I don't know, would probably be my honest answer. I don't know. <laughs> it's a bit like the ideal model because it's the learner coming up the river and what they can mm -hmm. help us at something yeah. without necessarily that being announced by a higher body. Yeah. It, it, it's creating those opportunities. So um, you know, I, I could start creating my own badges I could award myself. There's nothing stopping me to do that. So it's the opportunity of people creating badges for them to achieve. Um, I don't know if I answered that. Hi, uh, Martin, Alex for Thanks. Um, I get the impression just from the last three days that um, badges this year, at least for me, are this year's kind of hot topic, whereas MOOCs was last year's hot topic. This, is, this year's, <laughs> that's kind of got people's creative juices flowing. Um, I noticed that the conference website this year is WordPress and BuddyPress, which seems to be exactly the same as your um, Octel course. I was wondering if you'd had any discussions with the rest of the association about whether you're going to be awarding badges for next year's conference. Um, it's, it's funny you should say that. Um, <laughs> But it, it was a discussion that um, it was something we wanted to, to do, and there was you know a number of aspects of that you know we could have potentially badged in terms of if you're a presenter, if you're an attendee, um, uh, you know, and aspects of you know your interaction on the course or, or the conference as well. Um, so unfortunately, we were beaten by time, but um, I think that's one of the useful things of um, doing. Octel is it's an opportunity to experiment with these things and then deploy them uh, in a different context and that's what that's our kind of our development arc is Octel we then put that into the, the conference site then whatever we learn from the conference we'll put back into Octel and at the same time we're looking at thinking about how we can support the wider alt community as well so obviously alt does CMOL are there aspects of that that we can start including badging Oh, it has a number of special interest groups. Is there parts of that that we can start badging? So, uh, yeah, we've got badges. <laughs> we've got badge, badge sunglasses on. Everything is <laughs> badge tinted. Is there a last question from the bottom up at the top? So, so um, a, re a reflection um, that um, it felt there were sort of two distinct levels of badging. What you were showing us was yeah. really quite fine-grained badging about participation yeah. in, you know, maybe just a week of yeah. the, um, the, the the course, which felt, you know, great in terms of motivating the learner, yeah. et cetera, um, but feels sort of way too fine-grained for, for example, an employer to yeah. engage with. Um, so, so I'm wondering if you've sort of thought about aggregating those fine-grained badges together to sort of almost automatically yeah. feed into higher level badges or is that very complicated or, or what? It was, it was very much the uh, the reason that we had, as well as the, the, the more fine-grained badges each week, this topic badge. Um, so that would be some something. And we had a, at the end of the course as well, we actually created some special badge, badges. So if you've got all the topic badges, then, you know, we, we had a, a gold badge, you know, Octel gold participant badge. So, um, that I think that was useful in terms of um, basically allowing the individual more control over what they wanted to display, but also keep that motivation going, um, you know, throughout the course. And I think that's one of the things with with badging is it's it's micro accreditation. Um, 
and you can there's some really interesting work in terms of creating different pathways or different collections of badges that actually mean something else. Um, so yeah, I think there's going to be a lot more work in that area. Okay.